I've been playing Super Mario Odyssey for about a month and getting ready to play some beautiful Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I collected 500 moons, about like half of the moons, and I thought it's about time for a review. Well, let's go to the disclaimer. First of all, I do not have a capture card. Of course, I never showed gameplay, straight gameplay, and I always use off camera, but instead, to make it look clean, I am going to be using a Nintendo Treehouse gameplay while in this review. So this is Stock Gamer 007, and here's my review of Super Mario Odyssey. And to add a sweetener on top, which game should get Game of the Year, Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey? So let's get started. So, all I could tell you is that Super Mario Odyssey is a great game and definitely worth $60. So why are you continue watching my video? Just buy the game, am I right? But I have a lot to share with you about this game and how it compares to Breath of the Wild in a lot of different ways. But this game looks amazing. So let's talk about performance and graphics and the things that Nintendo gamers don't really care about. And the game is running at 900p dynamic um, resolution, so when you go to New Donk City, you drop to 720p, and it's always at 60fps. Well, small drops, but I really don't see it unless it's in New Donk City. And this game is so buttery smooth, like it's like a PC game, smooth. And obviously because it's 60fps. In my opinion, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild have better graphics, but an unstable 30fps made the game like a huge bummer especially in Korok's Forest. So it's great to see Mario Odyssey or Super Mario Odyssey have somewhat a stable 60 FPS. Let's talk about story. <laughs> Mario game with story. Well it's not really not the case. Um, browser kidnap Peach and that's it nothing spectacular. Well with the boss battles along the way is amazing but that nothing spectacular. Sometimes I'm grateful sometimes for Mario games that the, the little Mario games that add like original story such as Super Mario 3D World that you don't have to rescue Peach for once and you're rescuing other small princesses from another world but that's a completely different story but Super Mario Odyssey is not that game. The story just add a little twist with the wedding and the new villains, the Brutals. So let's move on to gameplay. We all know that the game is returning to a sandbox style of game or returning to, to form of 3D Mario such as Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine. When Mario go to a kingdom, he have freedom to go anywhere he wants except the cat kingdom in the beginning but digress, let's forget about that. You have a couple of goals in each kingdom. The kingdoms could change looks and the conditions by doing the main quest. To continue to the next kingdom, you need to collect a certain amount of power moons in each kingdom. When collecting moons, you continue in the same location except in story significance. All the moves from Super Mario 64 is in the game except the grab button and plus moves from Cappy, Mario's new companion, have so much moves that will increase Mario's flexibility in stages. So you can achieve longer distances by using Cappy, but although Cappy is an amazing addition to the Mario series or Super Mario Odyssey, I have some gripes with Cappy or with motion controls in this game. And that's the biggest problem with Super Mario Odyssey. When I try to do a spin attack, if I want to throw something or anything, I gotta shake my switch. I played most of this game in portable mode. and. I have to shake my switch to the left, shake my switch to the right, shake my switch downwards to do all the motion control awesomeness. I know you're going to tell me that it's possible to do a spin attack or the circle thingy without motion controls. It's maybe possible but it takes longer time to activate so it's not ideal you want to do it instantly fast and up to the situation that's up that you need it for instantly right? Mario's Cappy throws it up. To the side or downwards it requires motion controls and that's a big problem if you want faster speeds 
on an enemy when you're using an enemy with Cappy's capture ability, you need to shake your switch or I what I do is take off my 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 joy cons on each side and separate them and shake it to go really fast. It was like one moon that I have to capture and bill a, uh, a, a bullet bill. And I was like, I have to shake my switch? No, no, no. I'm not gonna shake my switch. I'm just gonna pop it on the table and I have to shake, 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 shake to get the, the moon. So, in my opinion, that handheld mode is horrible for Super Mario Odyssey, especially for some moons. Not all moons, don't get me wrong. It's great just to lay down your bed half the time and you could just sit there and, and play the game without shaking your switch, but for some reason it just doesn't feel right. And I recommend separate Joy-Cons for Super Mario Odyssey's motion controls, but the rest of the game, it's great with a Pro Controller. I believe you, if you want to collect all the moons, especially the hard ones in post-game, I believe that you should do most of it in dock mode and stay away from handheld mode because some of them you need motion controls and the Pro Controller will be the best, best control to use. And each kingdom, let's move on to kingdoms, each kingdom is completely different from each other except maybe two levels are similar to each other because of spoilers i will not spoil these kingdoms even if it's been a month since the game comes out but let's share my favorite kingdom my favorite kingdom is new donk city and everyone's favorite kingdom right and the easter eggs in new donk cities are amazing the mini games are great as well and when you beat the main quest all the moons open up and you have so much moons to collect it's like so much things to do in this game. So let's move on and talk more about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild is a massive open world game with a lot to do. And I played so much hours. I played like over 135 hours of Breath of the Wild. And a lot of people are going to say, you're a scrub. I have 260 hours. I'm like, no, 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 no. I have a reason why I didn't continue Breath of the Wild after after 130 hours of gameplay so I have a lot of experience in my opinion <laughs> to talk about this game compared to my experience of 35 hours of Super Mario Odyssey and let's talk about the Great Plateau and that's why I love Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that's like the first thing I love about it the Great Plateau is the best tutorial in all Zelda history in my opinion just remember Twilight Princess with the crappy tutorial, the log tutorial, the fishing mini game, catching the fish and giving it to the cat and and all of that ruby hunt. Oh my god, it was so annoying. Probably the worst tutorial in all Zelda history, but that doesn't even matter. We are we are talking about Breath of the Wild. Remember back early before it's gonna be like Twilight Princess. People that like Twilight Princess will like Breath of the Wild or something like that. I heard something. And I was scared at first, but this this tutorial is just perfect. I just love it. Just love the Great Plateau. It teaches me a lot to do, like a lot of things you could do in the game. It teach you about the physics. It tell you. It teach you how to play the game. It teach you about combat. It teach you about the basic abilities to use in puzzles without really holding your hand, and that's amazing. So let's move on to gameplay. And the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild gameplay is amazing, and Link could jump. To be honest, that is the best feature in this game and the climbing and the best. Oh my god. That is the best needed ability in all Zelda history that Link needed but never had. Jumping. Climbing. That's it. But you have the attack button, the defense button, all your rune abilities to access to access in combat and especially stasis. I love stasis a lot. And it can work against a lot of enemies. Maybe my biggest disappointment is that Zelda Breath of the Wild cut down of uh, key items or items that you can use in regular dungeons most of the time in other Zelda games. And I believe it's a welcome change because the rune abilities doesn't seem like keys anymore like previous Zelda games. But part of Link's arsenal, like part of his moveset. Also, probably in the next Zelda game, we might receive more rune-type abilities. Probably not going to call it runes uh, from the Sheikah Slate. But it might have like new type of items that could work in the open world, but not just as a key in a dungeon. Also, you can use rune abilities to complete many puzzles in the world. 
and shrines and the puzzles in the world are getting cruxies that's probably not worth getting it because you get a golden turd but that's that's a completely different story uh, it's probably just spoiled the whole thing completing the shrines give you orbs to help upgrade your health and stamina because you need stamina to climb or run defeating enemies drop loot and weapons depending on the enemy obviously weapons break for some reason but okay and these loot could upgrade your armor why can i upgrade rex armor this is probably the worst 3D Zelda story in Zelda history. What is the placement in the timeline? Downfall or child? Which is it? After playing the game, I realized the memories with Japanese voice acting is better. But when I first put the game, for some reason, Nintendo didn't have like a dual audio option for some reason or 12 audio options. I know Nintendo have different audios for uh, Breath of the Wild, but... I don't know why I couldn't play it in Japanese audio, but when I realized the Japanese audio was way better, I could imagine that I could have a better playing experience, but sad, but it's okay. The controls in Breath of the Wild or The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is perfect, not like Super Mario Odyssey. So-called everyone Nintendo fan always say it's a perfect game, but people just overlooking the motion controls for some good reason. So let's wrap up my opinions. I had more fun with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The game is almost perfect, but with a lack of story for a Zelda game, just like Mario, because Mario's just that browser kidnapped Peach and Mario had to save her, like always, and just a little spin on it, and the performance issues that Zelda carries in the Lost Woods and stuff, and certain areas in combat. In my opinion, Nintendo fans should stop looking at only Zelda and Mario for the game of the year, because Nintendo fans need to understand that there is a, another game that's out there that could go against Zelda, and... I know Nintendo fans don't really care about other games on other platforms really, but there's a perfect game that have no story problems, no gameplay problems, and no performance issues. Just like some problems that Zelda have and some problems that Mario have. And that game is... Duh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. PUBG! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean Persona 5, yeah, Persona 5. If PUBG, if PUBG gets Game of the Year, oh my god, I don't know what I will do. If you guys are interested, I could make a Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild versus Persona 5 and which game should get Game of the Year because in both of these games, I got over 100 hours, so I know what the hell I'm talking about. And not Mario because Mario has some problems. I just can't agree with Nintendo Force motion controls in Super Mario Odyssey and and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild performance issue isn't really a problem if the controls feel right. And Super Mario Odyssey made a big mistake and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild took the crown. In my opinion, Persona 5 versus Breath of the Wild would be a better comparison for game of the year. No one is going to listen to me, though, but because I have a unique opinion on Zelda versus Mario. And people are still going to vote for Super Mario Odyssey despite these problems. And I already know that because people might not see these problems as a big deal, but I do because I don't know. It's just me, in my opinion. I am still not going to vote until the last minute for the Game Awards because I can't decide really between which game is better, Zelda or Persona 5. So in the comment section below, state your opinion which game should get Game of the Year, Super Mario Odyssey or The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And if you want me to make a Persona 5 versus The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in the comment section below. Knowing Nintendo community, Mario, Mario, Mario. And I understand why people feel that way because Mario is still fresh in their mind and they just played it and it's amazing. I know Mario's a great game, amazing. It's the third best game. I'm sorry, this year. All right, it's third best. I just can't decide is Zelda or Persona 5 for me, in my opinion. I'm not going to force it on you. Enough with my rambling. This is Dot Gamer 007, and I see you the next one. Peace.